Hey everybody, it's Mother Goose 27 and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are finally back in the So I Finally series. I'm sorry it's been so long. My life's been a little crazy this la these last couple months, but I'm really excited to be back. I played the first two games. Let me just clarify, I did not beat the first two, but I played and I absolutely loved the first two and I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm about to beat them soon. I never played the third one when it came out because I heard so many bad reviews and people were so unhappy with it and I was like, eh. I love the first two so much, I don't want to have to put up with a game I'm not happy with. I don't want to see a bad sequel. But then, it was on sale, so I bought it, and then I never played it. <laughs> and then, I went out of town for a little bit, I had a lot of extra time, so I was like, eh, I'll try it out. So, I finally played Darksiders 3. As always, there's going to be time codes in the description below. I'm going to give my general thoughts of the game. I'm going to talk about the gameplay. Then I'm going to talk about the story. Then I'm going to talk about the DLC real quick. I'm not going to go too much into it, but I, I, do, I do have some things I want to say about it. Then I'm going to give my final thoughts, and that, that will be all. This will also be a spoiler-filled review. Also, one last thing is I think I'm going to start streaming on YouTube again. I'll probably make an official announcement here pretty soon, but just a heads up to you guys. Let's let's jump into the actual video now. I absolutely love this game. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Why did I wait almost three years to play this game? This was so good. This Darksiders 3 is hands down one of my favorite games of all time. Like, I love Darksiders 1 and 2, but 3 is absolutely amazing, and everyone who said it's not is wrong. <laughs> now, I didn't play it when it first came out. It might have been really gl glitchy. They might have changed things a lot, so maybe that might have been a part of it, but genuinely, this is an amazing game. And I cannot believe it took me so long to play it. I'll talk about these more in depth later on in the video, but the gameplay is just so fun. It is so fun. And it is a lot harder than the first two games. And I think that was a really big problem with people. They didn't enjoy the third one because they changed the gameplay, which is understandable, but lore-wise, it makes sense. So for those of you who don't know, Darksiders is a series about the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, but the Apocalypse got started early and war got framed for it. So the first game is about war, the second game is about death, and the third game is about fury. War and death are incredibly powerful and they just tear through their enemies. Fury, on the other hand, apparently is a little weaker but stronger in magic. I think is how they explained it in in lore on why her gameplay was harder. That makes perfect sense to me. I'm happy with it. But they did change the gameplay a lot. But again, I'll talk about that more later. I just wanted to kind of dive into why the gameplay was different and why fans were kind of unhappy with that part. The story, again, I will dive into it more when we get to that section. Amazing. One of the best character developments in all of video games. Absolutely loved it. It did take me a little bit to actually like get into the game like the first area I'm not gonna lie. I played the first area a couple a couple times Before I actually got to the first of the seven deadly sins envy or who we thought was the first of the seven deadly sins as we learn later throughout the series that wasn't actually envy and she ends up being the final boss. I literally I think I tried it three times and that before you get to envy it's literally only maybe, maybe 10 minutes of gameplay before you get to <laughs> Envy. And I, I I don't think it was until my third time trying it that I actually got that far. But once I finished the Envy fight, I was like, okay, I, I get it. This is, this is what this game is, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I think my only complaint about this game is you couldn't save at any moment. So there were a couple times where it glitched, or my game crashed, or I accidentally closed it thinking it was on quick resume and it wasn't, and I lost a lot of progress. And there were a couple times where I was after that happened that I was playing and I was just like, man, I really want to stop playing right now, but I can't risk turning it off and losing my progress and I can't save. I'm nowhere near anywhere where I know for sure it will autosave. And so that was a little annoying and I'm hoping in the next game that is changed. But I think that was the only thing I really didn't enjoy about the games. 
let's talk about the gameplay one big gameplay change they took away the ability to climb things which was really big in the first two games so that was a little weird i there were definitely some moments i was like ah, i wish i could climb this but i think it changed the puzzles a lot it is a adventure puzzle game it's very legend of zelda-esque where you've got to fight through a dungeon or an area to get to the next boss uh, or to find the next item that'll help you get to the next boss or the next area. Really, really enjoyed that. And a lot of the puzzles from the first two games revolved around climbing things. While I do wish we could have had the ability to climb, I think it really helped differentiate this game from the others, making their, its puzzles a little more unique, which a big part of the puzzles were the hollows. Fury, as she plays through the game, unlocks four hollows. The flame hollow, the storm hollow, the Force Hollow, and... Oh, frick, what's the last hollow? What's the last hollow? A few moments later. And the Stasis Hollow, that's what it's called. Each hollow came with a unique weapon and a unique ability that would help you either, obviously, if it was a weapon, fight enemies, or the ability was mostly used to help solve the puzzle. So, for example, the Flame Hollow lets you do a really big jump basically or a charged jump that would let you go higher this storm hollow lets you float kind of like the glider from breath of the wild the force hollow makes you super strong and lets you like either destroy certain walls or push giant rocks around and the stasis hollow kind of let you freeze time <laughs> and you could like jump you could like freeze enemies or you could do a double wall jump which was really awesome this really made the puzzles feel interesting it made them feel unique and it just made them a lot of fun especially like the flame hall is the first one you unlock and you see like this big purple wall and you're like i know i can get through that somehow and then you play through the game you unlock the force hollow and you figure out what its ability is and you're like oh i remember that area i can go back and destroy that wall and see what's through there and it just made it a lot a lot of fun again each one came with different weapons which if you have the DLC, you could unlock another set of weapons for those hollows, which gave you a lot more variety. You, you could mold the playstyle to how you want it, and I really, really enjoyed that. You could also find enchantments for your weapons and your armor that helped you out. I can't remember what they're called at the top of my head, but I had an enchantment that boosts my health. I had one that did thorn damage, so basically any damage an enemy did to me, they would receive a portion of that damage back, and I upgraded that one quite a lot at, to the point where <laughs> there were some enemies that would hit me once and then die. I would never even have to hit them. <laughs> I really just love that. It's very Demon Souls-esque where you're collecting souls as you're going through either by defeating enemies or finding lurchers. As you collect these souls, you could either buy items or upgrade your character. Now let's talk about the combat and why a lot of gamers did not like it. So as I talked about earlier in the general thoughts phase, they changed the gameplay a lot. Lore-wise, Fury is apparently a weaker than her brother, so she had a harder time fighting enemies. So instead of just running through and it being a hack and slash where you're just killing enemies left and right, it was a lot more like Dark Souls, where you were more focused on dodging and counterattacking than you were on actually just running in and killing the enemy. So a lot of players didn't like it because they enjoyed that feeling of being so powerful that no one could really stop them. I get it. Trust me, I get it, but I really enjoyed the different combat style. And after beating Darksiders 3 and going back and playing some more of 1 and 2, I found myself just trying to play like Darksiders 3 and just getting absolutely killed <laughs> because I was trying to dodge and weave and counterattack when I should have just been running in and slaughtering my enemies. Now, I don't want to oversimplify Darksiders 1 and 2 because they are absolutely amazing, and if you haven't played it, played them you definitely should but in terms of combat it just feels a little more alive a little more fluent in Darksiders 3. One thing I didn't enjoy though was Darksiders 1 and 2 have absolutely beautiful finishing moves you could just cut people to pieces. Darksiders 3 did not feature that so I was a little disappointed there but I understood why again the combat was just very very different. Earlier I was talking about the hollows but in terms of combat you have these four hollows that you can switch to almost instantly at any moment. Fury's basic attack is a whip. Really useful. Probably was the 
weapon I use the most just because it's there from the beginning and you always have access to it. The hollows on the other hand you can only use one hollow weapon at a time but again you can switch them almost instantly so let's say you're using the flame hollow you have I have no idea what they're called but they're shorter whips basically that have giant blades on the end. You're fighting that's not working instantly you switch to the force hollow and you've got a war hammer where you can just absolutely crush enemies and if that doesn't work switch to the stasis hollow and you can use swords switch to the storm hollow where it's a kind of javelin spear at least the base weapon is but the main point of this is you can change at any moment you can adapt to the enemies and as well as the whole combat change in terms of dodging and countering with this added aspect of changing hollows almost instantly it really made the game feel unique it made it feel alive it made the combat feel so fluent and i really hope if we get a game with all of the horsemen someday that she keeps these hollows because it was so unique to her let's talk about the story so this is an absolutely amazing story as i mentioned earlier the whole plot is the apocalypse was started early, war, one of the four horsemen was framed basically, and the whole series is kind of figuring out who framed, who framed him, who started the apocalypse, what's really going on here, but the first game, we have a prologue that starts when the apocalypse starts, war gets captured basically, and then the rest of the game takes place a hundred years later. Darksiders 2 and 3 take place between the prologue of the first game and when most of the first game actually takes place. So the game starts with Fury coming in, seeing her brother chained down. She tells the Charred Council, basically the keepers of balance in this universe, homies, I will do what you want, but make me the leader of the horsemen. She is very shallow. She's very prideful. She really only cares about herself. The Charred Council then sends her to defeat and capture the seven deadly sins. As I mentioned earlier, we fight the first sin, Envy, who really isn't Envy. Then we go on and we fight all of the others. Wrath we have to fight twice because somebody betrays us and kills our horse, which was one of the saddest moments in this entire series. I felt almost as angry as Fury did, and that drives her a lot. But as you're playing through, you're fighting the seven deadly sins, you also start to discover humanity. And there are still people alive. And the start of the game, you're like, ah, eh, it's their fault. They should have been stronger. Doesn't really matter that they're gone. But as you play through the game and you start to meet more humans and interact with them, by the end of the series, Fury becomes a self-proclaimed protector of humanity. She has given up on her pride. She has accepted her place in the universe. She's realized that the Charred Council is not really who they say they are and just has this huge character development that we haven't really seen in the series yet. I really did not like Fury in the beginning. I thought... <laughs> I thought she was a mean person, but by the end, she was one of my all-time favorite video game characters. The gluttony fight, though. I probably should have put this in the gameplay section, but this fight almost made me quit playing. Like, I fought gluttony probably 20 times. The first time I fought him, I barely took down any of his health. He just absolutely destroyed me and then I fought him again and again and again and again and then I gave up and I was like, I'm gonna go level up. And I went and I leveled up quite a lot and I went and I fought him again and again and again and again and just made no progress and then I said, fine, I'm gonna go fight some other of the seven, seven deadly sins and I went and I found and killed Greed and then at that point, I couldn't fight Pride I couldn't fight Envy yet because we thought we'd already defeated her, but we didn't know she was actually still out there. I couldn't fight Wrath because I needed the Stasis Hollow to get to him, and I'd already defeated all of the others, so really all I had left was Gluttony. And I went through all of the areas, and I mean I went through everything, killing every enemy, trying to find every collectible I could just to level myself up as much as I could. I spent hours i spent hours trying to level this up level myself up and then i went and i fought him again and again and again and again and i still just could barely make any progress like most of these enemies are in multiple stages i could barely get him about to halfway health and get to the second stage which the second stage i didn't realize was incredibly easy 
one of the easiest st stages in all of the boss fights in the entire game. But the first stage just kept kicking my butt, and by the time I'd get to the second stage, I barely have any health left. So I went, and I just played, and I just kept playing, and I just g kept going through the same area over and over and over again. And then somehow, somehow I found an area that I had missed. Somehow I'd missed this area, and I found... Between the lurchers and enemies, I found like 70,000 souls, and I leveled myself up quite a lot, and I finally went, and I finally beat him. I finally beat him, and then I closed the game. I thought it saved. I thought it saved. And I turned the game back on. <laughs> and it hadn't saved. And I had to fight him again. <laughs> Which I beat him because I'd learned all the patterns and I'd leveled myself up enough and I had enough items blah 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 But just the fact that it didn't save as I mentioned at the beginning of the video There was no ability to save whenever you wanted it crushed me. It crushed me I was so mad, but I did it overall though. The story was really really good like I said Fury's character development was amazing seeing her from the beginning to the end and her becoming the self-proclaimed protector of humanity was really nice to see and seeing strife at the very end was amazing last thing i want to talk about in terms of story is the fact that it had multiple endings i really really like that i believe the canon ending is where you spare the lord of hollows and i mean he dies anyway but then he gives you the amulet whatever it is i believe that is the canon ending and where the story will be going forward in four and hopefully five i personally hope we get four which is based on strife he gets his own game and then five will be the massive all four horsemen come together game but that's a video for another time but my whole point is i believe that is the canon ending i might be wrong please correct me if i am but i just really enjoyed the fact that there was multiple endings i really love when games do that you could also start a new game plus which i did and then barely got past the first envy fight <laughs> but i do i probably will play through it again just because there's some special things you can only do within the new game plus so i will probably be doing that okay to talk about the dlc just real quickly there's two there's the void and there is the crucible the crucible is a wave based mode basically you just survive 100 modes I really enjoyed it. It was a great way to get items and to level up my character. I only ever made it to wave, I think, 26, maybe 27, but it was really fun. Now that I've started my new game plus, I probably will strive to actually get to that 100th round. The Void, on the other hand, is a more story-based area. Volgrim, the guy who sells you things, teleports you around the map. Kind of creepy. I feel like he's going to be an in-game villain. That's just personal theory we'll get into an into at another time basically he's like hey there's some people trying to take over the serpent holes can you go handle them you go handle them and then you find out hey actually vulgrim lied they were the people who lived there and he just had you kill them all it was really fun and with it they added the ability every time you beat a certain one of the bosses you would unlock a new weapon for one of your hollows so by the end you had two weapon choices the base weapon and the dlc weapon for all of your hollows which again just helped really add to the play style now what i didn't realize i did not beat the void i was on the very last boss and he just was absolutely destroying me and i was like you know what? i'm just gonna go beat the game i'm gonna level up a little more and i will come back as soon as i start my new game plus because i thought that i would have all my weapons and abilities including the hollows that was not in fact the case you still have all your weapons and you have everything you've unlocked but you do not have the hollows so i literally could not get back to the final boss and i was so disappointed i was so disappointed but you know what i will beat him some day okay final thoughts something i want to add to this is play times so my final play time was 38 hours and three minutes. Like I said, I had to play a lot to beat Gluttony. I'm pretty sure you could beat it a lot quicker than that. I just kind of suck. <laughs> but I 
absolutely loved it. I think I would give this game probably an 8 out of 10. The puzzles were amazing, the gameplay was amazing, the story was amazing. Absolutely fantastic. The only things that really were against it was it was kind of glitchy at points. Like, there were multiple points I literally had to quit the game and lose a lot of progress because I, I got stuck somewhere, like in between some walls, or I went to an area that you could get to that had a puzzle, but after you beat the puzzle, if you go back into that area, there's literally no way to get out. So there were some difficulties there. There was no way to save. So again, as I said, with the glitches and the gluttony fight just kind of made it annoying but so with all of that i would like i said eight out of ten absolutely amazing one of my favorite games probably ever but not perfect and uh if you haven't played it i definitely recommend you'd play all three one two and three but you know we're specifically talking about three today if you haven't played it i would say wait until it's on sale or see if you can find a pre-owned version i would not pay full price for it anyway that's all for today thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like and subscribing to join the flock and i will see you in the next one mother goose out